Hey, this is Practice Prepper, and in this video I want to talk about something that came up in a recent video that I did. Right now I'm here at Yellowstone National Park. I'm here for a week with my family. As you know, Yellowstone National Park is over a massive supervolcano, uh, and I'm sitting right in the caldera right now. It could explode at any time. You know, you know, people say, uh, and you know, uh, the past year or so, there has been a lot of uh, earthquake activity. There has been, uh, you know, some, you know, geysers going off that don't necessarily always go off and everything. So, you know, some people are saying, oh, you're getting closer and closer to this supervolcano erupting. Uh, you know, so is it dangerous for me to be here? Is it foolish to me for me to be here? Well, it got me thinking uh, because uh, while I've been here, uh, another video that I made recently came out uh, and got a lot of you know, positive and negative feedback on it. And it was a video about making um, uh, making the best use out of power lines if they're near your home. Uh, for, you know, learning wilderness skills, getting out, you know, doing hikes and things like that. Uh, here's a link to it if you haven't seen that video. Uh, that video got a lot of uh, a lot of praise. People like, like the message about getting out, spending time with your kids and everything. But it also got a lot of criticism from people that suggested it was really foolish to go out because there's electromagnetic fields around power lines. You know, maybe we're going to give ourselves cancer. I'm going to give my boy cancer, you know, child abuse. Um, uh, there's also herbicide spraying, which I even mentioned in the video. Video because I say that you can identify a lot of wild uh, edible plants under power lines, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily go eating them. So I acknowledge right in the video that there are herbicides being sprayed, but I still did it. I still I, I, I get out there and I, I do those kind of things with my boy. I brought my boy here to Yellowstone with me, uh, and. Uh, it, it's got me thinking like how people think about dangers and how they decide to live their lives. Is it, is it reckless? Is it irresponsible? Is it foolish for me to take my boy out and take hikes under power lines? There are pluses to it. You know, he learns wilderness skills and we're not in the, in the thick of the, the woods. And here in New England, there's things like Lyme disease and uh, uh, West Nile virus from mosquitoes and everything like that. And you get a lot less mosquito traffic and stuff like that when you're out in the open like by a power line so you have less of those dangers and you know you have these other things like uh, you know herbicides and whatever um, and and there's a balancing act there now for some people there is no balancing act it's just it sounds like that if they can identify something that's on their list of things that are potential dangers that that list is the same as their list of things that they are going to avoid like the plague that if they know something that has some kind of a danger like there's an electromagnetic field around a, a power line that for them is the same as being something they will just never go near uh, because they, they've identified it as dangerous. Now uh, electromagnetic fields around power lines for example, uh, I'm, I was actually surprised when I tested them how low they are. As a matter of fact, the, the, uh, the electromagnetic field around most power lines that I was testing back several years ago when I was thinking about building a house near some, and I wanted to know the story on that. Uh, was far less than anything like uh, using a cell phone or even sitting in front of a computer or uh, you know just being inside the average uh, average person's home with all the electro electric wiring and everything like that. Um, so that that might fall into the category of fears that are like it's a real thing, but it's being way overblown. It's it's being way exaggerated. Um, but anyway, I don't want to talk about like whether these fears are founded or unfounded, but like just the idea of because you've identified something as being potentially dangerous, does that mean it's something that you should never do or never do with your family? Like, should those two lists be the same? Should the list of things... Oh, I've got a goose flying through. Are we going to get to see the goose? Might go by, back behind me. It's just a Canada goose. I'm in New England. Canada geese aren't all that exciting. <laughs> Not for me, because they're all over the place in New England, too. Um, but should your list of potential dangers be exactly the same as your list of things that you're going to avoid like the plague? If there were pandemic plague out, would you not go out of your house? I probably wouldn't go out of my house if there was pandemic plague, sp plague spreading around. But, uh, you know, a common cold virus, you know, that's a danger. You don't want to get a cold, but are you going to avoid going out of your house because of that? Uh, and I, I think that there is a gray area there. Some people just see it in black and white, and it's like if something is potentially dangerous, avoid it like the plague or avoid it like the common cold or whatever. Um, and it's just, it's just on the no-no list. Coming to a place like Yellowstone, is that on the no-no list? Because it is on a giant caldera. It's a big super volcano. At some point, it's going to erupt. In fact, in the past year, Yellowstone's been acting kind of weird. Um, but I still come here because the, I feel that the chance of it erupting in the week that I'm here is pretty slim. And I think it's important to get out and live your life. Uh, you know, in the power line video, people talked a lot about, you know, electromagnetic fields and, you know, herbicide spraying. They didn't talk about the dangers of staying in your house and not getting out. 
and, uh, and not getting exercise, not learning wilderness skills. Um, now I know it's not a you know either or. There are other things you could do to get exercise. It's not like you're either going to stay in your house or take a hike under power lines. But for a lot of people, things like that are what's available to them. And even in my area, uh, if the alternative is well, taking a hike in the woods, there's plenty of that near me. You have things like uh, eastern equine encephalitis that are carried by mosquitoes. You have plenty of Lyme disease carried by ticks and things like that. So uh, whatever you do, there are always risks associated with it. And I think it's important as preppers to uh, acknowledge that as preppers, we're not living a lifestyle that eliminates risk and gets rid of any danger that's a potential in our life. The idea of prepping is to look out there, see the dangers that are, that are out there, and decide, make an intelligent um, calculation about how you want to alter your behavior or not alter your behavior um, in regard to that kind of thing. And it doesn't mean that just because something is dangerous that you, you know, you're going to hide in your basement. And, even if you did, there are all sorts of liabilities of hiding in your basement, not getting out there. So I think it's something to think about. It, it reminds me of another video I did about like, are, are preppers just a bunch of scared people? Maybe some of them are, but not all of us. The key uh, thing to prepping for me is increasing the quality of your lifestyle. Uh, you know, now when they're, you know, we're not in an SHTF situation and during an SHTF situation. The, the, the key idea is improving the quality of your life. And one of the ways that you can do that is getting out and occasionally taking risks by coming to places that might explode any moment, by uh, going to environments that may not be the most ideal, most ideal uh, healthy kind of environments. Air pollution itself is everywhere, especially for me in New England. New England is the backwash of the entire United States. Thank you all, thank you all for that. Um, but you know, I don't want to choose to live my life inside of a house with a you know a, a dust filter or you know a, like a particulate filter going the entire time, so that I don't expose myself to that because that's not living a life. And preppers are still allowed to live their lives. At least I think so. What do you think? That's it. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.